Now, we, we have two people that want to come speak to our group. And so uh, we are trying this new tradition amongst the tea parties that we represent of instead of just giving people the open mic, we said, we're going to give you the topic and we want you to address that topic and then we'll open up to questions. Now, anyone that comes speaks to the tea party has to answer at least three questions from, you, from the audience. The first speaker um, is actually not here yet, so we're going to skip him. We're going to go to Mike Moreno, but let me explain what the topic is. We're going to talk about crony capitalism today. Crony capitalism, as defined in Wikipedia and my little additions on the, uh, on the slide, is an economic system where success in business depends on close relationships between big business and government. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> now that happens in St. Paul, but it especially happens uh, out in Washington, D.C. Monty Moreno and Jim Ayler are both running for the U.S. Senate. And I think the Tea Party, if it's actually got origins, it came from this very concept when all of a sudden we saw a Republican president bail out Wall Street. And we said, something's wrong, right? So, I said, this is the topic for tonight. Jim Abler will be second up, but this is a, a picture of uh, our wonderful governor and uh, Ziggy Wolf, who he provided, uh, was it, $400 billion of taxpayers' expense for his place of business. All right. First up, actually, will be Monty Moreno. Monty is a buffalo farmer, I understand, and I don't know your whole resume, but I've met you at the North Metro, and I think at State Central, and I'm excited as heck to hear from you. So without further ado, Monty Moreno. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Monty Moreno. That picture that was up there was absolutely fantastic. Sue Jeffers, if you all know who she is, uh, wrote a blog and she asked who could give the best rendition or the best storyline to those two guys with the shovels in the dirt. Mine was throw them both in. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of likes and a lot of laughs on my that one. So anyway, just to uh, let you know who I am, I am a constitutional conservative. I make no bones about it. I am a Reagan Republican. Ronald Reagan was on that won me over to the Republican Party when I was just a youth. Um, <clears throat> Michelle Bachman, who I'm sure you all are aware of who she is, is a friend of mine and my wife Nancy's. She has been for years. I ran for the same seat for the U.S. Senate 18 years ago. I was a small business owner. I just owned small businesses. It started out with hair salons. I owned about five independently owned hair salons. A gas station convenience store. Took over this convenience store that we owned the real estate for years. It was a rental property for us. We took it over and ran that business from, took it over the first year business was $835,000. Uh, by the third year, it was $2.4 million. Needless to say, we hired more people and made business work. I understand what it takes to be a small business person because I am one. Uh, also raised an American bison, buffalo, and that has been a uh, been real interesting. Uh, it, it's interesting to talk about crony capitalism tonight because it's evident everywhere we go and every we see it everywhere. You don't have to go much further than Solyndra to understand what crony capitalism looks like. That's where you have campaign contributors who give money to a particular candidate and he then rewards you with money to the tune of a half a billion dollars to run a company into the ground in less than a year. I don't know about you, but I would have spent that money a lot differently than they did. With a lot different result, I might add, as well. <clears throat> but when you start looking at crony capitalism, it affects you every day of the year whether you recognize it or not. Another huge one is cold versus wind power. Our government right now wants to shut down coal plants. Do you understand what this means for our economy? When you take coal-powered or coal-fired generated power plants, last year in America, more coal-fired power plants were shut down than in any year in American history, adding 17,000 to America's unemployed. 
coal generates electricity at approximately seven cents per kilowatt hour for us here in Minnesota. Wind generated power costs 28 cents per kilowatt hour. So the whole idea is, from the government's perspective, if you are able to strangle, kill coal, you then can create the demand. Well, heck, if coal is the same price as wind power, let's all do wind generated power everywhere we go. Do you understand that concept? That is what our government is doing. Now, the wind powers has proven to be unreliable at best, but you see it in other industries as well. You see it with Gibson guitars. Anybody seen Gibson guitar? You heard about the issues there. Government comes in, seizes all their stock and inventory, but their competitor, who was a supporter of Obama, exact same wood, exact same country, process exactly the same, nothing happens to them. And you're seeing the law being applied unequally. Obamacare is a perfect example, and it is the ugliest of them all. All laws in America, as you understand and I understand, should be applied equally to all citizens. That's the way the law is written. That's the way the founders set this up. But when you have people like Harry Reid and their staffs are exempt, if this is so good, so perfect, so wonderful, and everybody wants it, and it's so wonderful for everybody, why do they want to be exempt from it? <laughs> your guess is as good as mine, and your answer is the same one I have. But there's a lot of companies that have also become exempt. Many companies, friends of the president, have been able to get exemptions from Obamacare. But that is one of the ugliest forms of crony capitalism. Would anybody here agree, would you agree that that is an ugly, ugly form of crony capitalism? And, and now, the other, the other aspect of this, you see, because it affects jobs, it affects the economy, it affects everything around us, and, and nobody really recognizes and understands what crony capitalism really looks like. I'm trying to put a face on it for you tonight. <clears throat> when you look at American jobs, you don't have to look much further than now, now, this would be a little different twist. This is a little bit more on the edge. It's not a direct hit. It's a little bit more on the side. You look at South Carolina. South Carolina is a right-to-work state. Boeing, a large aircraft manufacturer, went down there, built a plant, going to put 40,000 American workers to work. Our illustrious leaders in Washington, Democrats, decided that they needed to stop it because they weren't union jobs. So they went down and said, sorry, you can't, uh, even though this is a right to work state, we're not gonna allow you to build planes here, shutting down 40,000 jobs. I'm going somewhere with this. <coughs> then in the Midwest, there was a thing called the Keystone XL pipeline, which 82% of Americans support, that make us less dependent on foreign <coughs> energy, terrorist supporting nations, would create 140,000 American union jobs. Al Franken, who possesses a seat that I'm going to be taking from him. Yeah. Voted against the Keystone Pipeline, not once, not twice, but three times. Now you ask, what's the end game? Well, let's go one step further. Let's go to the Gulf of Mexico. In the Gulf of Mexico, there was an explosion there a couple years ago, there was an, and, and the courts deemed it was an accident. It was a tragedy. The court said, go back to work, start pumping oil, make American less dependent on foreign oil. The Democrats in Washington said, no, don't go back to work. So these 44,000 people who were hardworking, God-fearing, tax-paying citizens, just like you and I, are now put out of work. <laughs> They're losing their homes on foreclosure. They're filing for bankruptcy. Many are receiving food stamps. And you ask yourself, why? Why would our government do something like this? And you all heard about lead, right? Yeah. Lead, yeah. government now can't control guns. They can't uh, dismiss the guns, so let's, let's shut down the lead industry. And what this is all designed to do is put the squeeze on the American people. 
And as you do this and you eliminate competition, like Obamacare, and make it all so it's one source, let's have electric cars, let's, let's buy the company GE, right, or not GE, GM, excuse me. Let's take over GM, let's get electric cars, and let's promote electric cars. Well, we see the sales on that, the free market's not working, so if we can drive people out of their cars, force them out of cars, the point is, is jobs, energy, all of these issues I just talked about are all completely linked. They're all together. And you need to understand that it all comes from crony capitalism, and when it rears its ugly head, who's the payer of it? You. America is paying for it. As far as I'm concerned, ladies and gentlemen, if I can grab this, this is still America. This is the flag from the time I was a child that I pledge allegiance to. This is the flag my father fought under, my, my brother fought under. It's the flag my son-in-law is fighting under right now. America is still the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I'm sick and tired of people trying to come in and change it. You don't like America? Move. Please. Anyway, uh, you can, I'll end with this. This is a sheet of paper I have 10 issues on. You can go to our website. It's montimarino.com. Pretty easy to find. And you can go on there, you can explore issues. I have more issues on there than you could shake a stick at. Of course, here's 10 issues, and they're all right at you. There's no mincing of words, there's no beating around the bush, I call it just the way I see it. But you can go to montemurdo.com, you can check that out, and I'd appreciate it. Anyways, Montemurdo, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay. Questions, I think my, I have the first question. Is it Monty with an I and not an E? Did I spell that wrong? You're correct, it's okay. an I. Okay, I can get one wrong, and I remember, if you find mistakes in that magazine, that's Jack's fault, not mine. <laughs> Questions in the audience. Guy running for U.S. Senate. Just raise your hand if you got a question for a guy running for U.S. Senate. No questions here. Oh, here we go, back in the back. Is it the same one you gave better? <laughs> so how do we stop crony capital? How do we really stop what's going on in the evil of crony capitalism? Well, I don't know that it's any one particular thing, but I think the first thing you do is you hold elected officers accountable. We have a thing called a ballot box, and you can vote people out, but the problem is, is when you have a state such as Massachusetts, and you know what that state produces, and they put somebody in office, and many people say, well, you have a ballot box, you can vote them out. But the fact of the matter is, people from Massachusetts have been affecting our lives for years, and we can't vote them out. I think where you start, I think a great starting point would be term limits. 80% of the people believe in term limits. I am definitely for term limits. I think it's two terms in the U.S. Senate, which is a total of 12 years, six terms in the House, which is 12 years. If you want to be a lifetime politician, do that, and then run for vice president for eight years, then be president for eight years, and got a 40-year career. The founding fathers <laughs> that the gentleman was talking about tonight, they didn't look at it as a career. They looked at it from the standpoint of being a statesman and standing up doing what's right and go back home, back to your own private right. enterprise. Not sit in Washington and suck at the teat of the public and be part of the problem rather than part of the solution. But, good question. All right, one more question. Any other questions? Thank you. It's a comment. Well, what the heck happened? Does that count? It counts. Um, I just wanted to propose that uh, you drop the um, capitalism uh, word from the term crony capitalism, because the um, the mixed economy that we have today and uh, companies getting in bed with government, uh, this is no part of capitalism. This comes from the mixed economy part or you know, government meddling you know, in the business. So I mean, the better word would just be cronism and not crony capitalism because then it, come, it kind of has a bad connotation of capitalism in there. Thank you. Well, that, that is a great point. 
I did not coin the term, believe it or not, crony capitalism. That, that is a, yeah, I actually asked them to speak on that subject, and that's a very, very good point. I, we'll get another question. I generally, I generally use the word cronyism, but I think a lot of people have uh, heard the word crony capitalism before, the phrase crony capitalism and understand it. And the point of the fact is, capitalism has nothing to do with getting in bed in government and getting your favors. It has everything to do with private property, incentives, and, uh, and people being able to provide a product or service to the economy that people freely choose to use. All right, one more question was over it, there. Was it over this right there? Right there, Warren, you can use your voice over there. Yeah, I was just wondering uh, if there was one particular thing that you think will resonate with the Minnesota citizens against, uh, what's his name? Okay. <laughs> Stuart Smalley, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what, when do you think he's more vulnerable? I mean, what will resonate with the, the voters of Minnesota? You know, that's absolutely fantastic because contrast is what really makes this work. I contrast against Franken uh, as night is from day. And if any of you have been to my website, you will know that's true. The one issue, I believe, where you can win, if you win big, not just win, but win big, in the 7th and 8th District, the 2nd District, 1st District, or pretty much most of the greater part of Minnesota, is with the Second Amendment. When Al Franken voted for Bill 139, if you're all familiar with it, Bill number 139 stated that you, as Americans, do not have the right to have to keep and bear arms. He voted to take away your Second Amendment rights, and then in so doing, him and 45 other U.S. Senators voted to give the, well actually they all voted to take away your Second Amendment rights, and then they voted to give the United Nations U.S. citizenship status, now to understand what that means to you, me, is that they, they have the ability to ban guns all over America, confiscate your guns, confiscate your ammunition, and lock you up in jail if they deem it necessary. This man has voted and has been a traitor against the Constitution. He has stood straight up against the Constitution, and I believe with that issue alone, you will win huge in northern Minnesota. Period. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I need you to know that we have some information about the Thank you.